namaste and welcome to Dr. Shah's clinic. My name is Dr. Shah Dupesh and I am a consultant androlgist and sexologist in Chennai. I primarily specialize in male infertility and sexual health. Now if you are on this page, I know you have taken a leap of faith with us and if you are watching this video, I know you have some problem or some doubt relevant to male reproductive health. And at the outset, I would like to humbly thank you from the bottom of my heart for putting your trust in me. I will definitely not let you down and do watch this video till the end. Now, in this video, I am going to try to answer some common questions about male fertility and sexual health issues. Let's move on to the first question. Now, how common is this problem of male infertility and or sexual health? Now, recent studies indicate that male factor infertility affects approximately 7% of the overall global population. 7% is an incidence even greater than diabetes mellitus and it's a very, very scary figure. Now, we really do not know why in the last 15 years or 20 years, we are seeing a very, very sudden increase in male factor reproductive health issues. And we really don't know the reason as to why this is happening. Numerous causes have been attributed to this and some of the common causes that have been reported in the literature include genetic issues, hormonal disturbances, pollution, the kind of food we intake, lifestyle problems, obesity, sexually transmitted disease, hormonal deficiencies. The list is virtually endless. Now, all said and done, it's also important to understand that if about 100 to 200 patients visit a fertility clinic today, almost 40 to 50 percent of the time, the problem related to the fertility issue purely lies in the male partner. So it's completely unfair and it's completely unjust to blame women for female for fertility related problems. This is exactly why we have started, you know, among Chennai's most elite as well as maybe Chennai's most male centric focus clinic specifically for men to help men, you know, kind of overcome problems related to male factor infertility as well as sexual health. Now, leaving that aside, what are the common causes of male infertility? Let's go through them one by one. Now, the first common cause of male infertility is low sperm count issues. Now the WHO 2010 manual recommends that if the male has a sperm count of 50 million per ml as well as above, the patient can techni technically father a child within the first year of marriage. For men with much lower counts, that is with counts less than 15 million per ml and counts that are even more lower like say 5 million or 3 million or some men who have very very low counts in the range of you know say 50,000 to a million sperms per ml, male factor infertility is definitely seen. The second common cause of male factor infertility or male infertility is uh, low sperm motility. Now if a patient's normal sperm motility lies in the range of say 31 to 35 percent, fathering a child in the first year, of, first year of marriage will not be difficult. Now, for individuals where the motility is actually less than 31 percent, say if it's anywhere in the range from say 3 percent or 4 percent up to less than you know 31 percent. All these men will have some problems in fathering a child in the first year of marriage. The next common cause of male infertility is abnormal sperm morphology or abnormal sperm shapes. Now the WHO manual again says that if a male patient has 3% normal sperms, fathering a child in the first or second year of marriage will be fairly easy. Now in some men, the spermatogenic process is impaired and what happens is a large number of abnormal sperms are produced. Sometimes they produce sperms without even the acrosomal cap. So the gamete fertilization is not, it's not possible. And in some men what happens is the sperms are so abnormal that not even 1% or not even 2% of sperm, normal appearing sperm cells can be, space, can be seen. In some individuals what's also very interesting is that a combination of low sperm count, low sperm motility and abnormal sperm shape is seen. And this condition is called oligoastheno tetrosospermia and seen in about 15% of patients who visit a fertility clinic is among the most commonest causes of male factor infertility or male subfertility spe specifically in the South Indian population, oligoastenotetrosperm. Patients who have a combination of both low sperm count as well as low sperm motility and abnormal sperm morphology have severe problems with fathering a child naturally. Now, the next common cause of male factor infertility is no sperm in the semen. Now if a man has no sperm in the semen, the condition is called azoospermia and men with azoospermia cannot father a child biologically without an interventional treatment. It's important to discriminate, you know, between obstructive azoospermia and non-obstructive azoospermia. That is, in some men, the sperm does not come out because there is an obstruction or there is a blockage somewhere in the sperm transit pathways. For some other men, it, it, the sperm production does not happen because of hormonal deficiencies or because the testis itself is going on into failure. Moving forward from that, 
some men have a condition called Klinefelter syndrome. It's a genetic condition and there's an extra chromosome which is leading to failure of sperm production. These men are usually tall, they are obese, their hair distribution is less and they have absolutely no sperms in their semen and they cannot father children biologically without active treatment. The next set of causes that can you know, lead to male factor infertility or male infertility issues are problems with sexual health. Now sexual health itself is a separate topic but common problems that we see from a sexological viewpoint are erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, low sex interest, low libido, alternative sex interest, sexual fantasies and sexual paraphilias. Now what's very sad is that a large number of patients in its Indian subpopulation suffer from a condition called erectile dysfunction. Now in men who have erectile dysfunction, they are unable to sustain their erection long enough to achieve satisfactory penetrative sexual intercourse. That means the erection doesn't sustain and common causes of erectile dysfunction again, you know, can be diabetes mellitus, it can be cholesterol issues, it can be hypertension, it could be hormonal deficits from low testosterone or, you know, testosterone uh, metabolism based issues and a variety of factors can actually lead to erectile dysfunction based issues. Now, up to about 5% of patients or up to about 10% of patients who visit a fertility clinic actually have a sexual health problem, which is the sole cause leading to the infertility itself. So it's very important to parallelly treat and manage these issues. And these are not issues that we can technically ignore. Now, common causes of sexual health issues in men, in Indian men or the South Indian population include one, like I said, erectile dysfunction. The second problem that's commonly seen is premature ejaculation. In men who have premature ejaculation, the relationship satisfaction is very, very poor. And in these men, what happens is ejaculation usually happens within a minute or in some men even severe, severely the ejaculation is, happens so early that is less than 30 seconds. So these men, these men are said to have severe premature ejaculation. So, you know, in such relationships, because sexual intercourse is not at all satisfactory, the relationship breaks down. The female partner is not satisfied, the male is not satisfied and such relationships frequently end up with, you know, end up broke. So it's important to treat PME and premature ejaculation as a condition which where we can fairly uh, treat successfully. Now the next condition and sexual health problem we are commonly seeing in the South Indian population includes a condition called small penis syndrome. In individuals with small penis syndrome, these men have serious doubts with the size, with the length and girth of their organ. And this is more of a psychological issue in addition to an organic problem. So what we do here is we give them psychosexual counseling and reassurance and we also do an estimation of the penis size. Men with small penis syndrome interestingly also seem to suffer from some degree of sexual problems like erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation. So these, the triad of erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation and small penis syndrome can all be seen together sometimes in a small set of patients. And we see many such patients in the clinic and we routinely manage them. The other common sexual health problem uh, you know, that we see in the clinic is an ejaculation. Now in men who have an ejaculation, uh, what happens is the semen doesn't come out at all. So the, they, they have good interest, they have good arousal, they're able to penetrate their partner, the sex lasts well, but what happens is they don't reach climax or they have difficulty in reaching their climax so semen doesn't come out. In some men, they will achieve climax yet the semen will not come out. In these cases, what probably is happening is the semen is going backward into the urinary bladder and this is seen in men who are diabetic and also in men who have had prostate surgeries. So this is a common, this is another problem that we see but an ejaculation as a problem is seen only in about 3% of men who come to a fertility clinic for such, uh, such, for such treatments. Now the other set of problems that we have come across is a very common uh, set of problems that we see in men who visit our clinic are problems with sexually transmitted diseases. Sadly, 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 what's happening today is a lot of men are engaging, uh, in, you know, you know, in relationships that are not very stable. So there's not uh, much long-term stability in one-night stands and casual encounters, casual sexual relationships. And what happens with such relationships is that there's a high risk of acqu uh, acquiring STDs like HIV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, and you know, there are a range of other STDs. So. These STDs, the problem is, well, HIV is treatable but not curable. But the problem is with other STDs, it's not just HIV. Other STDs like chlamydia, gonorrhea and syphilis can actually cause long-term damage to the male patient's reproductive health. And some of these damages are usually permanent. So this is another problem we commonly see and treat uh, patients for in our clinic. So STDs have a very, very real problem today. Uh, and STDs also, you know, pro usually contribute to at least 2-3% to of the complete male infertility burden. 
and some other individuals another sexual another set of sexual problems that we are seeing is a condition called sexual paraphilias sexual paraphilias are notorious because such men do not have the same conventional sexual attraction towards you know their heterosexual partner or homosexual partners which way you look at it so they have a very very differing set of sexual interests and what happens is for such individuals engaging in a normal familial relationship is tough so this is another common set of problems that we treat in our clinic so that's uh, that gives that that's you know kind of the gist you know about the various problems uh, and various problems that are actually leading to the male 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 infertility and sexual burden in our country what's also very interesting to understand here is that you need to understand one thing uh, you know these problems are all treatable to a large extent at least 80% of these problems are usually treatable and curable and uh, the thing is you need to you know uh, uh, choose treatments that are you know scientific well validated and well published and today sadly what's happening in most fertility clinics is that men are being pushed into ivf and icsi icsi based cycles without a proper valid reason i've seen hundreds and maybe thousands of patients in the last 5 years who genuinely did not require ivf or an icsi icsi based treatment cycle or it is it's also called the test tube baby procedure in common language but they have been they have been pushed into it because of the social pressure and because the male is you know male and the female you know both of them are important so there's tremendous social pressure on the couples to conceive and bear a child in the first year of marriage and so the clinics are also you know playing party to it it's a very very sad thing to see this because conception conceptions do happen pregnancies do happen if adequate time is given so see many pregnancies don't always happen in the first year see maybe 50 to 60% of the pregnancies can happen naturally in the first year but large number of pregnancies actually happen in the second year and or the third year of marriage the problem is couples are not given adequate time because there's tremendous social burden and not just that with today's changing lifestyle the idea of casual relationships a lot of stds that are being rampant in the country and male factor infertility is constant on the rise are all you know it's just like you know adding more cream to the cake on top so it's only the problems are just aggravating and they're not coming down so if you're here at dr shah's clinic i'll definitely definitely help you through your problems the object of our, of our clinic is very simple we focus on natural conceptions we focus on cures rather than symptomatic treatment again i would like to thank you for putting your trust and watching this video till the very end i would like you to take a leap of faith with us you can schedule a consultation below with me directly or you can just you know click the call now button which is at the bottom of the page the bottom of the website on your mobile browser you get on a call with me i'll be very very happy to help you through your problem and i hope you enjoyed watching this video do subscribe to our youtube channel you can also find us on facebook and there's a ton of content on this website please please kindly go through it you know i've put a lot of effort into you know uh, you know creating this content for you because you have to be educated you have to take the educated you have to take the right decision or the proper educated decision on a fertility and or sexual treatment so please read through all the content that i've put i would also request you to subscribe to my mailing list so that i i, I can send i so i so for our, for our subscribers you know who come into our mailing list we send them over 32 weeks of content with a lot of free guides and self help books they are completely free there's no money involved in this so uh, i hope you go through i hope you come come out of all your problems stay healthy and stay happy and uh, do read all the content on this website panakam namaste and thank you for being here again